What's up survivors, I'm Natural Born and in today's video we're going to talk about all the different POIs and locations that you can find and loot in the console version of 7 Days to Die. I'll leave timestamps in the description below. Now this video was recorded on my creative world on Navis Gain. There's a few bonus locations at the end of the video that are exclusive to Navis Gain, but the rest should all spawn in random gen. All zombie spawns are turned off, so be aware when visiting these locations yourself. Now without further ado, Grab yourself some goldenrod tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. First on the list is the Working Stiff Tools. This POI can spawn in two different prefabs in Navis game. One is the larger shop here, and the other is a smaller preset found in Periston. Both of these buildings should spawn in random gen too. Now the Working Stiffs are a great place to loot early and late game. You will find crates scattered all throughout the building, just break the crate open and start looting. You should find 10 crates in the standard prefab. You can find all sorts of loot in these crates, including parts for the chainsaw, nail gun and auger. And not only that, you can actually find these items fully assembled as well. You can also find anvils, diron tool sets and calipers for your forges, mechanical parts and pretty much every tool in the game from stone to steel. The larger building also has a safe that you can break into. The smaller prefab will have three working stiff crates to loot and a workbench in the back room that you can pull apart with a wrench. You make your way up to the roof, you will also find a rotting sports bag that has a chance of spawning not only gun parts but also machetes. Poppin' Pills has three different prefabs, one being the smaller shop that has nine pill cases and a chem station, the larger shop that has 38 cases and a chem station, and the largest of all, which is the hospital, which contains 37 pill cases one wall safe, four mouldy backpacks and two mouldy sports bags. Poppin' pills are great to loot as you can receive every medical supply in the game from them. And it's a great place to pick yourself up a chem station early game. Now I'm not 100% sure if these prefabs are guaranteed to spawn with chem stations in random gen, so somebody let me know in the comments below if you've searched one of these and haven't found a chem station. Shotgun Messiah is a great place to loot when you're on the hunt for gun parts. The smaller prefab spawns 3 gun store crates inside, and the larger building spawns 11 gun store crates and a gun safe inside. You can find a total with 3 shotgun messiahs in Navis Gain, with the smaller prefab spawning in Periston, the two larger ones with one spawning in the top of the snow biome, and the other one spawning in Gravestown. Shamway foods are really good to loot early game, but late game, they're pretty trash. You will find a total of 11 Shamway crates inside and 8 beverage coolers. You can find a variety of food inside, from raw meat to canned foods, and even meat stews. And the beverage coolers spawn a lot of beer and coffee inside them, and also have a good chance at spawning Mega Crush. If you've spent a good amount of time in this game, then you'll know that the Mega Crush drink is quite a rare one to come by. Cracker Book is probably one of the most important stores to hit early game, as you can find every schematic in the game here, apart from the herbal antibiotics recipe. If you're looking to make shotgun ammo, you're going to find more paper here than you ever need. There are two different prefabs for Cracker Book. The smaller one has a total of 17 bookshelves, and the larger one has 32 bookshelves and a wall safe in the office room out the back. Passing gas a key early game to get yourself a little bit of gas for your mini bike. You can find a lot of gas barrels scattered all around the front and the back which can be turned into gas. There are a few different prefabs for this POI but they all pretty much the same. You will usually find one working stuff's crate in the garage area and if you're lucky a garage storage which can spawn a lot of good stuff in them. Most of the passing gas POIs you find will usually have a workbench in them too and the larger POIs can spawn with up to 8 gas pumps in them. Usually 6 out the front and 2 out the back. Inside of the grease pit you can break the stairs to have a chance at finding something to loot down there. You can also find corpses and bags on the roofs. Be cautious when approaching army camps as they are completely and utterly littered with landmines. They don't have the greatest loot inside them but you will always find a couple of the corpses some mouldy backpacks and medicine cabinets, but more importantly, at least one munitions box, but usually two. Some army camps spawn with a small watchtower, 
and you can find a munitions box up there too. Army barracks are not only a great place to loot, but also a great place to set up a base, as the entire compound is small enough to defend and already surrounded by concrete. Inside you can find one working stiffs crate, one gun store crate, and one Shamway foods crate. There is also a gun safe, two munition boxes here, and four juicy corpses to loot. If you look around, you can also find a duffel bag, four bookshelves, and a couple of gas barrels. Inside the roof of one of the buildings, you can find a corpse and the vents. The easiest way to get up there is nerd pole onto the roof and break through the vents on the top. Now I'm not 100% sure if this exact POI spawns in random gen, but I know larger missile silos do. This is the Red Mesa government facility in Navisgain. You can find two Shamway crates, two working stiff crates in here, along with the gun store crate. This is a great place to grab yourself some spotlights from too. Inside you can find a wall safe, two gun safes, and two munitions boxes. These places are amazing to raid with a wrench if you're on the hunt for electrical parts and components. But be aware, it is quite the maze underground, very easy to get yourself lost down there. Bomb shouters make for excellent bases early game if you can find them. Inside you can find a couple of corpses, a couple of bookshelves, and a gun safe. There is also two ways in. One is through the shed underneath the iron scrap, and the other is located out the back through a ventilation system. I recommend using the main entrance and blocking the stairs back up if you plan on using this as your base. Banks are a great place to loot late game, but not so much early game. There's a total of 18 wall safes inside the bank, and early game it's going to take you a very long time to break into all of them. When breaking into the vault, I recommend breaking through the cobblestone wall instead of the vault door, as it's going to be a lot quicker. Outside of the police station, you can find a gun store crate, and inside you can find one wall safe, one gun safe, and a munitions box. There is also a good amount of leather couches that you can break down for leather. You can also find a couple of bookshelves and corpses inside too. In the back of the shooting range where the hay bales are, nothing spawns back there apart from hay bales. I know a lot of people think that loot spawns back there, and I personally think that it should. Prisons make for great horde bases. You can find a lot of good loot inside. There are two wall safes, one desk safe, one gun safe, and nine juicy corpses that you can loot. You can also bring your wrench here and pick yourself up four spotlights which are located at the top of each watchtower. Shanty towns are a good place to loot early game. Inside of the med shack you can find four pill cases. The food mart has two Shamway foods crates. You can also find 12 beverage coolers scattered throughout the settlement. Now you can find a gun safe inside the guns and ammo store, but be careful because there's a few landmines in there. The waterworks factory has 8 working stiff tool crates inside. There is a hatch outside that you can use to get in. This will bring you into the underground portion of the POI. If you bring a wrench with you, you can pull apart all the control consoles for a decent amount of electrical parts and components. This may take you a while, but will definitely be worth it whether you're using the parts for crafting or selling. There is also a few corpses inside that you can loot, and a few cars outside to search too. This is a really good POI to hit early and late game. The electrical factory doesn't have the greatest loot inside, but you can find a working stiff tools crate downstairs. Now whenever you see three boxes stacked like this, there is always another box hidden underneath, so make sure to always check these. If you bring a wrench here, you can collect a lot of electrical parts and components. There are also five searchable cars outside as well. The oil refinery is a really good place to loot early and late game. You're going to find an insane amount of gas barrels scattered around here. Just make sure a zombie doesn't hit one of them. There is also a wall safe in the upstairs office, and if you nerve pole on top of the large oil tank, you'll find a vault hatch. If you break through this, you will find a corpse and two gun store crates inside. 
Factories are a good place to find garage storage boxes and a couple of working stiff crates. Most of them you will have to make your way to the roof to find. This POI spawns a lot of iron desks in them which have a high chance of giving you leather dusters which sell for a lot of dukes. You will also find a few gas barrels lying around. The tower outside usually only spawns with a bag up the top. Now you wouldn't think that the junkyard is a good place to loot but you know what they say, one man's trash is another man's treasure and this POI is a firm example of that. All around the compound you can pretty much find anything from gas barrels and gas pumps to multi backpacks and duffel bags. On top of the trash heaps you can find a bunch of goodies too, including bags and tyres. There is also quite a few corpses and lootable cars lying around. Now when you make your way inside you can find a gun safe locked away in the back room and a chem bench on the second floor. Although I don't know if the chem bench is a guaranteed spawn, there is also beverage coolers and bookshelves inside the main building and a few aircon units on the roof that can be pulled apart for mechanical parts. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Now inside of this POI you can find a total of three wall safes, one gun safe, three corpses and four searchable cars and a workbench. You will also find a few gas barrels lying around. Not the best POI that's on this list as there are no crates to loot in or outside I personally think that it should spawn with a few garage storage boxes or at least some working stiff crates but maybe they spawn different loot in random gen. Joey's used cars has 8 searchable cars outside so you can either pull these apart with a wrench or loot them when you can. Inside you'll find one working stiff tools crate in the bathroom, a suitcase in the other bathroom and some gas barrels and tyres lying around the rest of the POI. You can access the roof although there's pretty much nothing up there apart from a bird's nest and some aircon units. Jim's cars pretty much has the same layout as Joey's used cars. You're going to find five searchable cars outside, a working stiff tools crate in the bathroom, a suitcase in the other bathroom and you can also find gas barrels and tyres all around the POI. Hotels can be a really good place to loot early game you're going to find a lot of clothes, food and water here. If you can be bothered, wrench every single room and you're going to get a lot of electrical parts, components, scrap plastics and leather. There are 24 apartment rooms that you can loot. On the top floor you're always going to find one room that is barricaded up. This room will have a gun safe, a munitions box inside with a couple of bookshelves. The Grand Ostrich Hotel is a bit larger than the normal hotels. It has an underground garage with a few lootable cars. Now on the first floor, in the back office room, you can find two wall safes. If you make your way to the top floor, you will find a room full of spikes. Break your way through them to find a ladder leading up to the roof. On the roof, you will find a working stiffs crate and a gun store crate. Motel 8 is another POI that you're better off looting early game. The reception room has a wall safe and there are 16 rooms in total to loot. All the rooms have the same layout with a set of drawers, a bed and a bathroom. You can break all of the blinds for scrap plastics and pull all of the lights apart for electrical parts and components. But apart from that, there's not really a lot that you're going to find in these POIs. Day's End Suits is pretty much identical to Motel 8. There is a wall safe in the reception office and on the top floor in the storage room there is another wall safe. This POI has 20 rooms to loot and like I said you're better off coming here early game for some decent clothes and medical supplies as every bathroom has a medicine cabinet. Theatres are a good place to pick yourself up a couple of spotlights from. Inside the ticket booth you can find a wall safe, inside the theatre you can also find a working stiffs crate and upstairs you can find a gun safe. This is a great location to get yourself some leather and electrical parts and components from, all the TVs and lights. There are also three working vending machines inside of this POI. The cinema is an excellent place to pick yourself up a lot of leather from by destroying all of the chairs in both of the movie rooms. This POI has two wall safes, one is inside the ticket booth area and the other is in an upstairs office room. There's also two bookshelves in there. If you make your way up to the roof, you will find a couple of corpses to loot and some AC units to pull apart for mechanical parts. 
you like to hoard pitches in this game, then this is a great place to pick yourself up a bunch. This POI is better to raid early game for some easy leather. Churches never have the best loot in them. You can also find a bookshelf inside and a coffin or two. You can also find a couple of wooden crates or chests, which usually spawn the same loot as coffins do. If you go out the back of the church, you will find a small cemetery with around 20 graves. You can actually dig these graves up and loot the coffins. My game had a slight bug here where the ground was glitched over the coffin. If this happens to you, just log out and log back in to fix it. You can also find a lot of great loot inside coffins, from junk to schematics and even treasure maps. Fertilizer is also a common drop from these and one of the best things that you can get from coffins, whether you use it for farming or to sell. Cemeteries are actually really good to loot early and late game because you can find just about any item in a coffin and fertilizer being the most common item to spawn in them. Now these larger cemeteries have at least 50 or more coffins in them. So if you run around early game and dig up all of the graves, then you're bound to find something useful in them. It's amazing what people in this game get buried with. The crypts will always spawn with a coffin and at least a corpse or a bag. And if you do loot one of these early game, I recommend to come back when the loot respawns and see what type of goodies you can find. Now there's not really a lot to the docks. You're going to find a lot of trash, cardboard boxes, and a few tyres, and a couple of gas barrels. Definitely something you would rather raid early game instead of late game. The ALS Marina is pretty much just a slightly improved version of the docks. You can find a few leather couches, a couple of corpses, a couple of beverage coolers, and a desk safe. In the kitchen area, you can find a shamway box as well. Just like the docks, you will find a few cardboard boxes and tyres scattered around the POI. Diners don't have the most loot in them, but early game, you might find yourself a little bit of food in the fridges, a wrench in the sinks, or you can break the couches down for some cloth. You can also find four beverage coolers inside. Bob's Cafe is the same as the diner, but with a makeover. Instead of crappy couches, you will find leather couches inside. There will always be a couple of cars parked out the front too. You can use your wrench to break down all of the lights and wires for some electrical parts and components. Buzz's Bar doesn't have a lot to offer late game, but early game you can break down all the couches for cloth and wrench all of the TVs, lights and wires. You can find six beverage coolers inside and in the back kitchen you can find a wall safe. There's a reason they call this place the booby trap and it's probably not what you're thinking. There's a total of three landmines scattered around this POI. One is out the front, the second is on the main stage, and the third is right in front of the back door in the kitchen. Inside you can find a bunch of beverage coolers, you can find a wall safe behind the bar, and in the kitchen you will find yourself a chem station. There's also a lot of TVs and lights to wrench as well. Inside of the trailer park you'll find a lot of random junk scattered around from trolleys to tyres. There's a total of six letter boxes to loot for schematics, and inside two of the trailers, you can find two wall safes. This place can be good to take a wrench to, as every trailer has a TV and a few lights inside. There's not much going on at the skate park, apart from a couple of corpses lying around to loot. At the food bar area, you can find a wall safe inside, and a fridge, and a couple of coolers to raid for a snack. Inside of the ski lodge, if you break through the door to the reception area, you can find a desk safe. This POI has a lot of bags and suitcases lying around. It also has a good amount of leather couches that you can break down, and a lot of lights that you can pull apart with your wrench to get yourself some brass and electrical parts and components. Inside of the main sawmill building, you can find yourself a working stiff's crate. And on the top floor, there's a chance to find a workbench up there. And there's a bunch of consoles that you can pull apart with a wrench. Scattered around the POI, you'll find a lot of gas barrels. And in the worker's house on the top floor, you can also find a gun safe.
The mountain man's cabin is definitely a rare POI to find in your world. Inside you can find a forge, and in the back room, underneath the scrap iron table, you'll notice a wooden block that looks like it was placed by a player. You want to break through this block to find the mountain man's chest, which will contain the herbal antibiotics recipe. You can also climb into the roof and find yourself a gun safe. Am I gone funeral home? Now inside of this POI, you can find a total of 10 coffins to loop. If you make your way out the back into the morgue, you can find 5 mortician drawers to search. These will pretty much give you the same loot as coffins, but you're going to find a lot more rotten meat inside. And if you continue through the POI, you're going to find the incinerator room. Now there's two furnaces inside of here that you can loot. Now I don't know if they give the same loot as the coffins or mortician drawers, because all I've ever found in these is rotten meat. The best thing about cell towers is pulling everything apart with a wrench. Inside the main building you can find a wall safe, and scattered around the POI you'll find a couple of cars and corpses. Don't bother climbing the tower though, because there's never anything up there. Parking lots make for great horde bases early game. Inside you can find 5 lootable cars, and in one of the ticket booths you will find a wall safe. There is also a couple of corpses and cardboard boxes scattered around the parking lot. Schools are really good to loot early game, and especially late game. If you plan on wrenching everything inside, you're going to be there for a day or two in game, because there's so many lights inside. Each classroom has multiple lights and a TV inside. You can also break all of the desks for a little bit of iron and scrap plastics. On the first floor in the back office, you can find a wall safe, and on the top floor in the library, there is a total of 28 bookshelves. Now in the hallways, you can find 96 lockers. So whether you come here early or late game, you're going to find a lot of useful items. There's also a bunch of leather couches all throughout the POI that you can break down for leather. And if you make your way up to the roof through the teacher's lounge, you'll find multiple bags to loot and AC units that you can pull apart for mechanical parts. Now this farm is the one from Never's Gain. And I'm not 100% sure if it spawns in random gen, but you can find thousands of corn here. And in the main house in the basement, you can find a gun safe. And in the barn, you can find a duffel bag. Now these barns can spawn with all different bags in them, and some will spawn with gas barrels inside. The small shed out the back also has a bookshelf and a duffel bag as well. At these small camps you're always going to find a couple of bags and corpses, and usually a car or two. You're also going to find one tree stump as well, and you can break all of the tents down for some easy cloth. These caves can spawn in quite a few different prefabs, and you can find all sorts of different loot inside them, from cement mixers and forges, to working stiff crates, gun store crates, and even the rare Apache chest that has a chance to drop you, Taz's stone axe. You're also always going to find mushrooms inside of these caves too, but be careful, these caves are known for spawning ferals and bears inside. Houses are always great to raid early game, there's always a couple of the dresses for clothes, sinks for wrenches, and most houses have a chance at spawning either with a gun safe in the basement or in the roof. So make sure to check these early game. You can also pull apart all the lights and TVs, or break down the curtains, couches and blinds for some extra resources. Modern houses make for great bases early game. They have larger kitchens than the normal houses, so you can find yourself a decent amount of food in them. There's always going to be a wall or a gun safe inside with a few bookshelves and plenty of leather couches to break down. You're also going to find a lot of lights and TVs to wrench. Out the back of these POIs you will always find a swimming pool, making for a good water source location in the early game. Just make sure to boil that water before you drink it. Pretty much every abandoned house I've ever checked before will always have a hidden loot stash inside. 
you'll notice scrap metal on the ground you can see through the cracks to see if there's a bag or a purse underneath but it's usually easier to just break the block next to it Ruined houses spawn in two different prefabs. One has a front door and the other doesn't. Now the one that spawns with the door will always have an oven, a cupboard and a bird's nest inside. The other prefab will always have a sink, a toilet and a trash can. These can be handy when you find them early game, giving you the chance to find a wrench, a pistol or some eggs and feathers. When you see one of these cabins, always pop your head in and have a look because they have a high chance of spawning with a forge inside, so they can make for a good starter base for your first week in game. There's quite a few different prefabs for the traders, and each can spawn with their own goodies inside. I recommend taking the time to scout around the trader's compound when you find one, and loot what you can. You can also find workbenches and cement mixers at most of the traders. Now you can use these workstations, but just remember at 10pm they will kick you out and they will shut those doors and they will not let you back in until it's 6am. Most of the traders will also have small farms that you can raid, getting yourself some easy seeds. This trader has an underground mine with a working stiff's crate and some mushrooms that you can pick up. If you find this trader's POI, I recommend leaving something in the munitions box so it doesn't reset every time that you walk under it. If you come across the Indian burial ground, dig underneath the monument to find an Apache artifact chest. This chest has a chance at spawning with Taz's stone axe inside. Now I know for a fact that the football stadium only spawns in Navas game. Inside of this POI you can find two locker rooms with multiple lockers in each. Throughout the POI you're going to find a bunch of corpses scattered everywhere. And up in the top commentary box you can find two wall safes and a gun safe. This is another great location to bring your wrench to and start tearing apart all the lights and TVs. Or even if you want to build a base out on the football field as it's a great flat location. Now it's a shame that this location doesn't spawn in random gen as it's a really good place to come and mine. Because it's in the desert, you're going to find exposed veins of pretty much every mineable resource in the game, including silver, gold and diamonds. In the top shack you can find yourself a workbench and a sports bag. And inside of the mine, you can find four working stiff tool crates and a gun safe. You can also find a mountain man chest on the side of the cliff. As you continue through the mines, you're going to find a staircase that leads down into the canyon. This is the safest way to get down there without digging. Once again it's a shame that these POIs don't spawn in random gen, but I suppose if they had the canyon spawning all through random gen, it would probably tear your world apart. There's not a lot to the canyon cliff dwellings, if you make your way out the back, you can find a workbench, and what looks like a small tomb, with a coffin and a corpse inside. Now there's really nothing amazing about this POI, there's no wall or desk safes, no gun safes, and there sure as hell isn't any gifts in here. But if you make your way to the top balcony, you'll find that it has an amazing view over the whole canyon. And that about sums it up for this video. I hope you found some of this information useful on what's worth looting and what's not or maybe even seen some new POIs that you know to keep an eye out for in your world. And like I said, this whole video was recorded in Navis game. I haven't spent a lot of time in random gen, I've been looking for an excuse to start a new world. So if you want to see a random gen let's play of a long term world, then let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more 7 Days to Die console content. And smash that like button if you think Goldenrod gives you wings. But as always, stay safe out there survivors, and I'll see you in the next one. Ah.